Welcome, you're listening to the Leading Hope Podcast. My name is VJ Williams, joined by my friend and pastor, Kevin Jack. Thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day to become a better leader. If you're new, uh, we release a new episode every Wednesday. Love for you to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Get that delivered every Wednesday. Also, share it with a friend on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And also, please rate and review on Apple Podcasts. You won't believe how that helps get this podcast in the hands of so many leaders just like you trying to get better like us visit leadinghope.online to get updates about the leading hope community we finished today's series Finish. called leading me and this, a style. yes it is and it's episode 180 you have to get better 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 can't not get better there we go <laughs> Uh, one last time, the main idea for this series, leadership is about ownership of problems and solutions, leveraging your ability to continuous improvement. But if you gain influence, ascend in position, but you do not increasingly master self-leadership, your leadership will be short-lived because the most difficult person to lead is always the person looking right back at you in the mirror. Unless if there's a ghost, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking... I believe in ghosts, but I think it's more important that they believe in themselves. <laughs> Thank you, Ted Lasso. <laughs> we believe every aspect of leadership will flow from and tie back to self-leadership. So today is like, I'm, I'm attempting to make this structured. It's difficult. But yeah. So yeah. can I just give like my ideas real quickly? And then could we just rant for a little bit? Yeah. And then we'll see how much time we have to get back to the ideas. Yeah, this is good. So like the, the, the ideas is, are that like all of leadership is built off healthy habits. We'll have time to talk about that. Okay. That leaders who lead themselves deliberately develop and refine their skills from their habits. And that leaders who lead themselves deliberately develop a positive perspective. Okay. Okay. That's part of their development is the positive perspective. We're not arguing that. No. Okay. No. So like, those are the ideas. Here's the thing I want to like the core thing for the episode. Leaders who have mastered self-leadership put a priority on developing themselves. They do not delegate that role to anyone else. Yeah. So here's the like, here's the like ranty part of the podcast. Is and I don't want ever this podcast to just be a rant because those make me crazy. Yeah. Like, oh, I watch could... this five minute rant. Yeah. Thanks oh, for telling me not to watch it. Like not, I won't. Yeah, we're not that. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the people who get stuck in a spot and it's just like no one's developing me. And I just want to be like, that's your job. Yeah. Like your job is to develop you. Well, yeah. I just don't feel like I'm being properly developed. Yeah. And it's say like, what well, I don't understand. Like if we're, I, I know this is going to sound ridiculous. If we're like 1800s <laughs> yep. and books are scarce and there's no income and you have no ability to get it, I get exactly what you're saying. Like, okay, yeah, I get that. You need someone to mentor you. Do you have YouTube? Yeah. Do, do you have a library card? Yeah. Do you have a podcast platform? Which you obviously do, your favorite podcast platform. That's right. And it's just like, it just frustrates me because we assume that in order to be developed, it's got to be like this like super successful person taking us under their wing, guiding us every step of the way. And to say like, develop yourself. Yeah. Like make yourself better. Figure out what you need to do in order to get better. What you need to learn and then learn those things and do those things. Yeah, yeah. Mentors are stupid. <laughs> That's not um, what it's no, I'm, is. No, I'm just joking. Uh, I, know, I know what you're saying, though. You're right, because at the end of the day, even the mentor yeah. can't drive you to a spot to consistently, over time, make small improvements to get to what you need to be. Good. It can't. Good. It, I mean, even I hear this argument, and it will just continue the rant for another couple of seconds. I can't, I can't get physically fit without a trainer. <laughs> yeah. I need to pay a trainer. What? For me. I hope my wife doesn't listen to this one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, like, we'll edit that part out, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you, no. There's, like you said, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a hundred trainers on YouTube. Exactly. You, we don't need someone standing over us. 
Yep. To say one more. It does it does it help? Sure, it does help. Yep. But only for a certain amount of time. But you're exactly right. This is a really unique podcast today because saying you have to get better and then actually doing it is two different things. Yeah. Well, and I, I really believe to say like, hey, if if your leadership is going to improve, if the impact of your leadership is going to improve, it's because of the quality of your leadership improved. <laughs> yeah. I know that's like Yep. Like, if I buy better quality food, the food tastes better. <laughs> if I am a higher quality leader, my leadership is more effective. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you have to get better. That's right. But the piece on there is to say like, hey, uh, you, the responsibility of that is yours. All it's of it. It's not anyone else's. It's not your boss's. All, it's not all your parents. It, not a it's percentage. Not, yeah. It's just like it is, it is all on you to ensure that you're getting better. And I really believe that we live in an age today in which there is no excuse for not getting better. I couldn't agree more. Like you could go, it would be better if I had this or if this was taking place. But if you're actually not getting better, it's entirely on you because you have all the information you could possibly need. I think that's completely fair. All right, ran over. Let's jump into the structure of the podcast. Cool. So f I, I want that for you. I want you to be someone who is able to actually get better and to understand what it would take to do that. And I, I think for lack of, uh, if we excuse lack of discipline and an unwillingness to put forth the effort, I do believe there is a percentage of this that is, I don't understand how. And I want to quickly walk through that is like, this is how, this is kind of the foundational pieces you need to understand how to get better. So the first idea is that all of self-leadership is built off of healthy habits make it really simple. What do you daily do? The effective of the effectiveness of your life can be traced back to the effectiveness of your day. Okay? So what is your daily rhythm? What is your daily habits? What do you repeatedly do over and over again? Everything in your life, your relationships, your health, your personal development, your career success comes down to habits. What do you repeatedly do? I love this. Uh, James Clear says it clearly. He says, your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits. I know what your outcomes are going to be if I know what your actual habits are. And so just a simple question here. What current habits are leading you toward the outcomes you desire? And what current habits are leading you away from the outcomes you need to desire? And then <laughs> ask this, don't like say, oh, it's that moment. Hmm. It's the assignment moment. It is. Do you I know. Yell it? Oh, yeah. You assignment. Want... <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so don't just ask the question, hey, what outcomes are leading me away or what habits are leading me away? What habits are leading me towards? Ask this final question. What habits do I need to start to get there? And what habits do I need to eliminate to get there? <laughs> don't just leave it as like, okay, now I know these are leading me away. So what do I need to start? What do I need to get rid of? I want you to understand when you look at that from a sense of this is what I repeatedly do, you know, the kind of impact you're going to have. If development, if training in skills, acquiring information and evaluation of outcomes is in a habit. If it is not a habit in your life, then development will not be part of who you are. You have to insist on making new information, refinement of skills and evaluation of where I am part of my rhythm, part of my habits that ensures you'll continue to develop. Anything, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Second piece, leaders who lead themselves deliberately develop and refine their skills. I know that's not like, oh my gosh, Kevin, that's amazing. But leaders who lead themselves, they put a priority on developing and refining their skills. Abraham Lincoln said it like this, if I only had an hour to chop down a tree, I would spend the first 45 minutes sharpening my ax. I would spend time refining, getting better, sharpening my saw, as Stephen Covey puts it years later in his seven principles. Okay, they def refine their skills and they develop their abilities. Now, this is the piece where most people pull in the role of a coach. Say, I need a coach in order to do this. I think coaches are fantastic. And if you have a coach in the form of a leadership coach or a life coach or a speaking coach or a personal trainer or a marriage coach or whatever, like there's a coach for everything in the world today. And I, I don't say that in a negative way. Like if you want to hire a coach to make you better in something, that's great. That will probably be helpful. I don't necessarily think you need a coach in order to understand the ways in which you need to get better. 
uh, if I could break this down, and this is just like, I'm just going to kind of show all my cards on this and the things that I do. Okay. Yep. So like, as it comes to speaking, um, that's one of the things like, that's one of the, my strengths. That's one of the things I frequently do week to week over and over again. Thank you. Going through that. I work at it. Right. Like, and I work at every part of it. And I would say is like messages speaking is it's really, it's content creation, it's message structure and it's performance and delivery. Yeah. There's not an aspect of that that I'm not constantly seeking to develop and grow in at all times. Right. On the content creation, I am reading at all times. I am reading not just vague stuff that I'm curious about. I am reading stuff that is applicable to the content that I am going to talk about so I have better content. Yeah. On structure, I am listening to five or six different messages every single week minimum like every single week and I'm constantly changing the people who I'm listening to and I'm making notes on not just what they said, but why they structured it the way they structured it. That's right. one of the best ways for me to learn structure is to go, they do it like this. They tell a joke and then make a serious point. Yeah. They keep that joke running the whole yeah. way through. They and then take a pause. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I struggle with. <laughs> no, you're doing it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. I'm trying. That's right. Because I kept listening to all my audio books at two times the speed. <laughs> and so I thought, this was the rate that people spoke at at all times. This is the way you're supposed to speak every time. Here we go. What's that? Uh, can I give another one? That, and this is like a weird thing. But like um, I realized that uh, it, part of it is I'm a little hampered by the room that we're in just because audio stuff and things like that. Um, but I realized a couple years ago that, uh, that my, uh, enunciation was far below the people who I liked listening to, that my articulation of words was well beneath the people who I really had an easy time listening to. Huh. So I started doing this dumb thing. My daughter and I would read this book, Fox and Socks, oh, which yeah. is full of tongue twisters. Oh man, that could get you in trouble. Yeah. And so I do that and then I got really good at it. And so I started doing it with something in my mouth. Oh, wow. Like I put something that I wasn't going to choke on and put a bottle cap, something like that in my mouth. Sounds like you choke on which that. Which made it, well, maybe not that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but something that I didn't feel like I was confident that I was going <laughs> right, to choke yeah, on. Right. And maybe some things that I would in my mouth. Right. And I'd start doing it through that. There you go. And I did it like every day we read that book. Not because my, just because my daughter loved the book. Because that was my opportunity to grow and develop and get better. That's amazing. I so love I, that. I just want people to see like there's there's thousands of things that you could be doing yes. to develop your skill set that people aren't doing. And yeah. that's your advantage. Yeah. Um, although I've quoted him a lot throughout the series because I think his stuff on this is fantastic. Uh, Steven Sample said like this, go where your competitors don't go and read what they don't read. <laughs> I think that's so important. Don't don't find yourself stuck in the same train of thought as everyone else. Do something that's unique and different. So assignment number two for today. Assignment is what skill do you need to develop? What outcome do you seek? And who can you learn that skill from or where can you learn that skill from? Just real simply. Okay. What outcome do you seek? What skill do you need development? How could you actually go about it? And Here's my guess is you're going to want to say the only way I'm going to be able to learn this skill is from this expert who's world renowned and you may not have access to them, but I guarantee you have access to someone who's better than you are. Yeah. You may not be top level, but could at least get you to another spot. And I'm also certain that there's some skills that you need to develop in that you don't need someone to coach you in. You could actually get better all on your own. And I don't want you to be stuck still in the spot of just going, why well, can't better? Because no one has actually developed me. Develop yourself. Okay. There you go. It's your job. Yep. Last piece. Leaders who develop themselves deliberately develop a positive perspective. I think this is so important and it's going to be like so mundane. Yeah. Like people are just going to be like, yeah, whatever. Like part of their development is their aggressiveness, their intentionality, their optimistic view of the world, their positive view of their skill set and what it can actually accomplish. And I believe that too many gifted, talented, influential leaders drop off or drop out because they disconnected from their passion or purpose years ago. And now all they have is critiques 
on how the world is and how their organization is instead of actually seeing a better future that can come out of it. Rory Vaden said it like this, entitlement is the end of achievement. That a life of mediocrity doesn't come from having a bad attitude. I love this. A life of mediocrity doesn't come from having a bad attitude. A life of mediocrity comes from having an average attitude. <laughs> and the attitude is simply the way that you choose to see things. That that convicted me. Yeah, Roy's a genius. When I went through that. A life of mediocrity mm. doesn't come from having a bad attitude. Yeah. It comes from having an average attitude, which is like so duh. Yeah. I mean, but it's, yes. Yeah, but to, to acknowledge to say like, hey, it is an uphill battle to stay positive. Yeah. It is an uphill battle to stay intentional, to stay proactive, to stay aggressive on all the things that you're leading and doing. And so if you lose here, whew, you don't have a chance anywhere else. Yeah. And so that's my encouragement really to say like, hey, as you're looking at developing yourself, make sure you win mentally first. Because if you're not equipped to win mentally first, then it doesn't matter how good, how gifted you are. And so if development has to include a positive attitude as part of your perspective. Uh, man, there's uh, tons of content there. Um, all great. I'll say one thing about uh, you specifically. Um, <clears throat> the podcast that we do, we've, we've, we've laid out several times the reason that I came to you about this podcast years yeah. ago. I don't want to go. You can listen back to those, those episodes about that. Uh, but, but I will say this, uh, if you're out there and you want it's the reason, uh, Kevin is able to deliver, uh, obviously he's anointed, um, that, that, that helps uh, a tremendous amount. But other than that, he also puts the time in and the reason that he's able to have an effective message for 45, 50 minutes on a weekend is because he does the podcast. And the reason he does the podcast, cause he can speak on the weekend and it's a vicious cycle <laughs> of nonstop speaking. Yeah. about content that you were given or created or interested in or wanted to seek to get better. It doesn't happen by accident. He didn't wake up one day and go, I'm just going to be a great speaker. Like Thanks, you continually man. put in the work. And for any pastor that might be listening to this today or anyone that is in any organization yet to publicly speak, I would say set up a couple cameras or a camera, even if it's your iPhone. Yeah. Start doing a podcast. Anybody can do a podcast. You don't even have to publish it. Just review it back. Yeah. Like watch it, review it back. You can get better. You can, and not only can you, you have to, according to this podcast. <laughs> like you have to. I am, uh, I am baffled if we stay on the speaking side. How many people don't watch themselves back? Yeah, it, it's every week, every time. Yeah, and I'll hear other people that'll be like, "Oh, it's painful." Yeah. How do you think it feels for everyone who listens to you every week? It baffles me for college <laughs> or high school kids who uh, have. Uh, uh, aspirations to play in the collegiate level that don't watch back their tape of their oh. games. And I'm thinking, how are you ever going to know what you didn't do in the right moment at the right time if you didn't see it? Exactly. I can tell you about it, but seeing it changes the game because you've seen everything else holistically in the moment. I have a daughter. She's pretty fast. She's, a, she's quite fast. fast. She's fast. She can be faster. There's a way to do it. There's a local high school here that has this giant hill. I told her this summer she needs to run up and down that every third day for the entire summer, and she will be faster at the end of summer by building those right muscles in her legs and her hamstrings and her glutes, all that stuff. <laughs> like, she can. Yeah. But she has to want to get better to do it. Anyone can get better. They just have to have the desire to do it. I'll say this. Uh, one question for you is you said, what do I need to start one of the questions you, you, uh, one of the assignments assignment was what do I need to start? What do I need to get rid of? Oh, that yeah. last part is really good. Not all habits are great habits. There's some bad habits in there. There's still habits. So we always say it like this. Um, you already have habits, right? You already have habits. You can't start a new one until you get rid of a bad one. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I, I, there's so many things that I could, I, and I'm just as guilty, so I'm not preaching to anybody else than myself. As much time as I probably spend on Instagram reels, do you know if I just took a fraction of that time and applied it to a skill, how much better I would get? A fraction, not the entirety. I can still do Instagram reels. Now, some <laughs> of that is because I do social media too. I give myself a little forgiveness. But yeah. at the end of the day, how much time can you take away from a bad habit to put into a great habit? We can say it like just real simple, like – Take your daily activity on social media. Yeah, they, they even give you a time. Yep. Times it out based upon the entire year. And then ask. Oh, my God. Could I know Spanish? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what languages could I speak? Yeah. If yeah. I would have redistributed that time. Yeah. 
And I, I just want like, I, I think my hope for this episode is just to say like, Hey, the, the quality of your leadership is going to greatly impact the impact of your leadership. Like those two are completely connected and the responsibility of developing you isn't on anyone else. It's on you. Yeah. <laughs> and so you have to come into the mindset of, I have to get better and I am equipped to get better. And so that's my decision. That's good. Anything else you want to That's it. In and all right, guys, thanks for joining us. I have to get better. VJ, I mm. need to get better, and uh, this is going to give me the energy and the enthusiasm I need to do it, and I hope it does for you, too. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, episode 180. You have to get better. If you're new to the podcast, haven't yet subscribed, now's a great time to do that. We'd love for you to do that and post about it, rate and review, or both. You won't believe how that helps get this podcast in the hands of so many leaders just like you, trying to get better like us. We love hearing your stories, how the podcast working in your life or business. If you have a story, visit leadinghope.online and send that to us. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget your assignments because they're going to be great. Tell us how they went for you. We'd love to hear them. Put them on Instagram. We'd like to repost it for you. And then remember, everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Woo!